Hey there. In this video, we're going to walk through taking an existing Power BI report that's currently pointing an Excel document and repoint it to a SQL data source. This is for scenarios wherein uh, you know you're going to get uh, data in a SQL table, but it's not ready yet. So they give you an Excel version to work off of for a couple weeks. You build the report off of that based off that Excel version. And now the SQL version is ready, so you got to repoint it. So here's, here's how you do that. Okay. So if I head over here to my customers table, what we'll see is we've got a, uh, if I head over here to open up fields, we've got a uh, data table called customer birthdays, and we've sort of exposed it here in a visual. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but here we've got all of our customers, uh, their birthdays this year, and maybe their phone number. Maybe we'll send them a text wishing them a happy birthday. So I'm going to right click on this table and hit edit query. And what we will notice when we head over here to the query editor is that this customer birthday table is pointing, if I go to the first step, it's based off of another query called dim customer connect Excel, which is this query right here. And uh, what is this query? Well, all this is doing is pointing to the temporary Excel version. If I head up to the first step, what does it do? It points to the Excel version, right? Does the normal boring stuff. I, uh, I right clicked on it and did a reference to create this query right here, which is my actual data table, my customer birthdays table. I only kept a certain number of columns and I added a column for birthday this year. What I want to be able to do is come up here to source and say, I want you to no longer work off of the Excel version. I want you to work off of the SQL version. And in a perfect world, I could come to this first step and just change Excel to SQL, right? And hit enter and everything would work perfectly. But that's a perfect world. And we don't live in a perfect world. The problem is these two tables have to have exactly the same column names. Otherwise it won't work. So how do we ensure that? Well, uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to head over here to SQL, right? And I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to remove that step right here. Let's say that I've just created this query connecting to SQL, right? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by scrolling all the way over. And what we will find is if we're working off of a table in SQL, if that table has any relationships, it'll add these sort of relationship columns into the table. And we don't actually want these. You'll tell because they have these little yellow things inside of them. Those are structured values. We don't want that stuff. We just want the actual regular old columns of the table. So I'm going to click on this first one. Shift click on the last one, right click and hit remove columns to get rid of it. And now we're looking a whole lot better. Okay, so we've got 29 columns in that table. If we come over here, we've got 29 columns over here. We've got customer key, geography key, customer alt key, customer key, geography key, customer alt key. Okay, we're looking good, right? Well, maybe. Okay, so in my experience, usually most of these columns have exactly the same name, but rarely do they all have exactly the same name. Usually there's at least one or two that's off. So how do we expose that? How do we find that? So here's a trick for doing that. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Excel version. Now remember, our actual query is using this Excel version. So right now, this is the current version of the truth. I'm going to come to the very last step, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head up to Choose Columns. Click Choose Columns. And I'm just going to leave everything selected and hit OK. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because what I want is I want a list of all the columns that are currently in the table. And if you notice, by not choosing certain columns, just leaving everything selected, that's what I've got here in the code, starting there, going all the way down there. That's a list of all of the columns in the Excel version. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and head over to SQL. Okay. Uh, just to be safe, I'm going to right click on this step and insert a step after. Sometimes when you do choose columns, if you're already on a choose column step, it'll mix them together, and that's not what we want. Okay, so now that I'm here in the SQL version, I'm going to go to choose columns again. Hit OK again without touching anything else, right? And this is a list of all the columns in the SQL version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over here to the Excel version, get the Excel list, arrow down, Control-C to copy it, head over to SQL, and now take the SQL list, hit delete, and do control V to paste the Excel list in there. Okay. Now to the untrained eye, or maybe even to the trained eye, these look like they're the exact same list, but they're not. When I hit enter, I'm going to get an error. Okay. So if you look in the list from Excel, there's a column called birthday. In fact, it's right there. And uh, it can't find a column called birthday in the Excel version. So I'm going to head back a step, head back a step. And I'm going to look for some column that has some concept of birthday. Oh, and sure enough, there it is, right? They're awfully close, but one's called birthday and this one's called birth date. So what I'm going to do to make things nice and smooth is I'm going to change the Excel version. I'm going to change, I'm sorry, the SQL version to match the Excel version. Because right now everything else is using the Excel names. 
So I'm going to double click on this, call it birthday, hit enter. It says, are you sure you want to insert a step? I sure am. And now when I go to the last step, I still have an error, but notice it's not the birthday error. I have a different error for a column called phone num. It's looking for a column called phone num and it can't find it. So again, I go back a step and I just start searching. Let's go look for a column that looks like it's got phone number information in it. And, uh, oh, sure, hey, that looks like phone number information. If I come up to the top, oh, in this version, it's called phone, not phone num. So what do I do? Double click on it, change it to phone num, insert that step, that's just fine. And now when I go to remove other columns, I have no errors. So now I can be sure because in both this query and this query, there's 29 columns. See, 29 columns there, 29 columns there. And they both have the same exact last step where we're choosing columns and they're both choosing the exact same list. So because this list is exactly the same as this Excel list right there, I know that they've got exactly the same columns in them. Therefore, I could head over here to my reference query, go to the first step, source, and change it from pointing to Excel to pointing to SQL. Okay, hit enter. Okay, and if I go to the last step, it's worth checking to see if there's any problems. And uh, sure looks like there's not, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, hit close and apply, let it load the data. And just like that, we are A-OK. -okay.